Hey guys, today we're gonna go over three more variations of battle boxes, the best activator in all of youth soccer. So let's go. For those of you not familiar with battle boxes, I did a video a couple of months ago showing them and I'll go ahead and link that. These came to my attention through a guy named John Kokoris and the program that they have at 343 Soccer. So if you don't know those guys, I definitely recommend you check them out. They've got great content. A lot of the same stuff that I'm talking about here, they also advocate. So just a quick recap on how you set these up. You can see we have four orange cones in a square. Uh, set up much like a rondo. You would want about 8 to 14 yards in between depending on the skill level and age of your team. And here you can see we have two other cones of opposite color. Here I have blue and red arranged about 3 to 5 yards right in the center just out from the sides of the orange cones. Now remember, this is a setup for one battle box, and you don't want really any more than five to maybe at most six players at each battle box. So you might have to set up two, three, four of these either side by side, or if you have four of them, I kind of like to set them up almost like a square. So then you can be in the middle as the coach with your eyes on all of them, directing traffic and coaching your coaching points. The three battle boxes that we've already talked about are the 1v1 standard, the 1v1 pass and receive, and the 2v1 standard. This is a variation on the 1v1 pass and receive where instead of passing it with your foot, you're actually throwing a ball in. So players at the blue cone here have the ball. They play a throw into the feet of the player at the red cone. And then it becomes, again, just a 1v1 where the player at the red cone is trying to dribble 1v1 past the player at the blue cone into the top gate. The game ends if the attacker successfully gets through the gate or if the defender is able to tackle the ball carrier. Here's what this looks like in the training ground. The players at the bottom are throwing it into the players there at the top, and then again, they're going 1v1. And you can see this gives a really good opportunity to work on throw-ins, also to work on 1v1s, uh, 1v1, 1v1 attacking, 1v1 defending. And especially at the young age, they really have a hard time with throw-ins, if, especially if you don't work on them. And it's hard to take dedicated time at training just to work on throw-ins. Whereas here, you can use it as part of a 1v1, uh, and you'll see in a minute a 2v1, where you can really get these repetitions in for the players. So again, the coaching points for the 1v1 throw battle box. First, just how to throw it in. Hands up, above your head, feet down. Next, where do we place that ball? The ball should be at the player's feet. Also, how do we receive it? Working on that touch, receiving a throw. And then all the stuff that we normally would do with our pass and receive 1v1 battle box. So 1v1 defending and 1v1 attacking. The 2v1 back to pressure starts with where I have here the blue cones having the ball. Now the first person in line did not have a ball and made his way up to the cone as shown here. Once the player touches the cone, the player with the ball in line plays the ball immediately to him and pressure immediately comes on his back. This now sets up a really common situation in games where there's pressure on your back and you have the option of the support behind. They now play 2v1 to the gate at the bottom here. If they are successful in crossing that gate, play is over, or if the defender wins the ball, play is over. The rotation then goes like this. If you defended, you now go into the attacking line. If you pass the ball in, you now go touch the cone. And if you were the player who touched the cone, you now go into the defensive line. Here's what this looks like on the training ground. You can see that the player touches a cone. Once that happens, the ball goes to him and immediately you have a 2v1 with back to pressure trying to get through that small gate. When you first start doing these, uh, the kids might get the rotation a little bit messed up. So you gotta be careful with that. Um, you know, really they're trying to break lines here. You're trying to go 2v1, getting through that back gate and ultimately asking ourselves, how do we deal with pressure when it's right on our back? Where's the support? So the coaching points on the 2v1 back to pressure. How do I deal with pressure when it's behind me? How do I know when there's pressure behind me? So you have to check your shoulder, right? There's an early check right away, and then the ball's coming to you. There's a late shoulder check. So you're looking to check your shoulder early and then late. 
And then ultimately, if that pressure is right behind me, can I use my support to get us out of trouble? Another thing, the support person has to be ready to take an early touch forward to break that line. The 2v1 throw battle box is the exact same as the 2v1 back to pressure, except we're throwing it in to that player coming with back to pressure. So this is very easy to go right from 2v1 back to pressure to 2v1 throws because it's the same sequence, the same cadence, but this time it's a throw. And really what you're trying to do is represent what would happen in a game in an actual throw where the pressure would be on your back almost immediately. Here it is again on the training ground, and you can see not only does this help in terms of the thrower and working on their throws, but it really helps the person receiving the ball deal with pressure on their back because this is what happens in the game in a throw-in, right? Like you throw the ball and pressure immediately comes to your back, and then how do I use that support to get out of trouble and break lines? The concept of where is the pressure? Do I have time to turn and face to go 2v1 or 1v1? Or is that pressure just too much where I have to stay on my back and play my support? Once again, guys, the coaching points here are if I'm receiving that throw, how do I know pressure's there? Am I checking my shoulder? If pressure's there, can I hold them off, play my support? If the pressure's not there, can I turn and go 2v1 to break a line? And also the throwing technique, right? Am I putting it at the feet? Are we giving them a ball that they can handle? So guys, you should now have six variations of the battle boxes that you can introduce to your team. And these are session activators. I do them the first 15 to 20 minutes. And I don't do all of them. I'll do two or three, depending on maybe what I'm focusing on that particular session. The whole point of these are to recreate moments in the game over and over and over again. So whether that just be a simple 1v1, whether that be back to pressure, whether that be a throw, we're just trying to replicate the interaction and the repetition over and over and over again. So when it gets to a game, it becomes instinctual. Guys, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comment section or reach out to me directly. Otherwise, thanks for watching.